Hello everybody and welcome to another leatherworking adventure. Today we have a special adventure for you. A knife sheath. Want to see how we make it? Let's go. Alright, so we are going to jump into this kit here. And this is the knife sheath kit. So we're going to do a couple of prerequisite things. Um, a little bit different. I'm not going to be like all extravagant and draw on these. I'm definitely not like good at this stuff we're gonna we're gonna start learning how to do this stuff i think um on some scrap leather i'm gonna pick up some scrap leather and we'll start trying to figure out how to like do all this cool art stuff i can't draw very good so i'm, I'm not promising that we're gonna do anything amazing with it uh, for this one we're gonna do is we're gonna do a deer theme so we got some little deer hoof prints that we're gonna use and we got a big deer head that we're gonna use um, we're gonna just kind of keep it simple and elegant looking maybe we'll do a little bit of basket weave in there too um we'll see kind of how it plays out so um what comes with the kit um this doesn't come with the kit um the stamps obviously don't come with the kit you get your pieces of leather you got your uh, strap you got your string and your needle inside there and you got some rivets so optional tools um, the rivet setter is optional, but, uh, definitely good to have so that you can set the rivet. Um, the only rivet in here is going to be setting this band inside like it is. Um, I have it set this way for a moment and I'll kind of explain what we're going to do. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to try to emulate, uh, put a little something here up on the top. I don't have the barbed wire things. Um, I do plan on getting them. I just haven't done it yet. But what we want to do is we want to kind of... Whoa. Nice. It's a good snap. This one's nice and hard. Holy oh, shit. Dude, it only took us like a couple minutes to drop a cuss in here. There we go. Okay, so that snaps real tight. So what I want to do is I kind of want to see, like, is there any place that I can put, like, anything on here? I debated it. They have like barbed wire going around on there, but I don't know if I'm going to do anything with it. Um, where's the hole? There it is. All right, so that's what's going to be exposed. I really don't know. I don't think I want to put anything there. I think I want to like concentrate everything on the actual knife itself. So we got the sheet is going to come down in here. These holes are not, oh, because it's going to be kind of puffed out. That's right. Okay, so we're kind of like looking here. Uh, we want to see where these last top holes line up. It's like somewhere in that area. And I'm just going to draw a really fine line across here for right now. Because I want to see where it lines up. I just want an idea. Um, so if we look at this, uh, we could put that right there. That's probably not going to fit. So what I'm thinking is we're going to go like right in here. Like right in that area and we're going to stamp stamp in there and then we'll kind of like figure out what we're going to do with everything else after that we want the deer in there maybe we'll do the paw prints down like this and like that i think that'll look kind of nice yeah let's do that okay so uh what we're going to do is kind of figure out where we want to set things and we're going to get these wet um this piece we're not going to have to get wet i don't we're not going to do anything with this um, this top piece we're going to leave plain like it is here. We're just going to focus our work on this piece here. Um, we're going to color this. We're going to change the color of this. Um, we'll go dark on this one. I want to go dark on this one. So we're going to get everything stamped up. And colored. Um, so these two pieces we're going to color right away. This piece is going to get colored after it gets stamped. And let's use the magic of videography to get ourselves a little bit ahead here. All right, so we opted for the leather dyeing to be done quick. So we got that sitting, it's drying right now. Um, we are gonna have to do the back side of that. What we're going to be doing now is we're gonna be getting this prepared for stamping. So we're going to put our one big deer head stamp on here and then we're going to put some little doe prints around the edge of it so we're just kind of wetting this right now and we're going to let it soak in 
You can see it as you're dripping the water on it. You'll see it soak in. And you'll also see when it stops. So right now it's a little saturated. We're going to leave it with that. Um, we're going to let it dry up a little bit. We want it to soak that in and start working its way to edge. And then we're going to be using our stamps. Get those done. Uh, once these over here dry up a little bit, we're going to flip them over and we're going to do the outside of them. Uh, what we're looking for is just to get like a little bit of a aged or like a weathered patina look to it using a medium brown. Um, you can get these at your craft store. This is just the brand that I bought from the store where I get my stuff. Um, it's a medium brown vintage gel. It's used for antiquing. And you can see we're starting to it's starting to lighten up a little bit in here, so we'll be ready to do this pretty quick. Um, we'll just line this up. I want to line it up probably uh, underneath the second stitch hole, and then I want to kind of eyeball it in the center and just get it into a spot. So when I'm ready to commit, um, we'll let it dry for a moment, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to stamp the deer head in. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of put some little dough patterns across and then down and then back up some little deer feet. Maybe we'll just put feet over the whole thing. I just have like a deer feet -y pattern. So we got a nice little deer hoofy pattern on here. I like it. You like it? I like it. All right, so this is fairly dry. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do the back side of this, the back side of this uh, with the vintage gel. Now on the back, when you do the back sides of these, it's gonna turn it like a black almost with the vintage gel, that's fine. Um, you don't obviously have to do the back. I'm just doing it because I don't want to have that huge contrast of colors between the lighter leather and then where I vintage tanned it. Um, again, make sure you get this top side cleaned off if you get anything on it. So we're going to put this off to the side. We're doing the sides of it too so that we can get um, everything looking all Patina and weathered. Whoops, there we go. Oops, this got some stuff on it. So we're gonna wipe that off. And then we're gonna put it off to the side here. We're gonna take it off of here all together and put it on our tray. All right, we're gonna do this too on this side. We're just looking to darken it up a little bit. You're going to get this stuff on your hands unless you glove glove up before you do it. I probably should have gloved up, but you know what? It's all, it's all good. All right, so you can see you had a little bit come through. Um, the back side of this, you can set it down. It's not going to be the end of the world. Um, put this away. It's nice to have a little tray that you can do so you don't get um, stuff all over your, your nice uh, cutting boards and stuff. I, I still manage to somehow, but... You know, we do our best. All right, so now we're going to come in here and we're going to finish this guy off. Um, we'll take this off of there and get with this way. We're not going to need the stamper anymore. Whoa. Let's try and not break the place. And we can put the big hammer up because we have a little guy for the riveting. Um, you can pick them up at any hardware store. 
not necessary. I just got it because I wanted it to be nice. Um, and actually, I take that back. We are going to have to pick this back up. I'm going to put this down and we're going to do the dyeing on this pad here. So you got to kind of rub back and forth on these when you do it, when you do it with the stamping. Um, if you want to get your patina in the stamping or your gel. There we go. So we got a nice little gelling there. And now we just got to let this dry. All right. So that's drying up a little bit. It might take a minute, but we're good enough to get started here. So what we got to do now is we got to get this rivet set. So there's two different kinds of rivet setters. One's kind of indented in for a button and the other one's kind of wow. Uh, outwards for not a button so we got this one right here uh, it says you gotta do this on a hard working surface we could drop yeah we probably should we'll grab the grab the granite piece out just for a short bit here and get this here um i'm gonna put the plastic down too because i want the rivet to be, not get smashed by the smashed too hard by the set here so we're going to put the metal piece down. There is an indented part on here, so it's important that you get it in there. And then we're going to bring this down. We want to make sure that when we do this, it's going to put the shiny side up. All right, so we got that. Where's our other half here? All right, so we got the other half here. You got to get it set on there. Just get it started. Then you got your piece here. It's kind of clunky but it works. So we got it riveted in. Beautiful. And now it looks like the only thing we got left to do with this folks is to stitch it up. But this is a little bit wet so we're gonna give it some time and we'll finish this up shortly. Alright it's time to wrap this bad boy up. So it says we got a stitch a double stitch at the start at the top. So what you want to do is you want to you're going to purposely um, increase the whoops, strength of where the knife is going in at the top and out. So we're going to leave a little bit of a gap, uh, some thread here at the end. How long is it? About six inches of thread between the parts to tie up later. Um, we're not going to make the mistake of going too short this time because that was a pain. So we're going to be going through this twice. So we're going to come through this first time. Um, we're going to hold the six inches of thread to, with our hand, other hand, and then we're going to come back up through the two. Oops. We're going to grab the thread so that we can come back up through the two, like so. So essentially what we're doing is we're coming through the first time and we're doubling up here on this. Oops. All right, so got a nice and tight stitch there. Got it held tight. Now we're going to be coming back up, and then what does it say we're going to do? The bow there. All right, so we're going to do a running stitch now that we got the double in. So we're going to come back up through the second one, and we're going to just start running the stitch back and forth. And y'all see me do this a million times, but we're just basically like going over. And then the next stitch is going to come up through the back hole. And it's going to go up through. And we're just going to do this all the way until we get to the other side. You can use a stitching pony for this too, but um, for these I'm just kind of doing it in my hand. We do, I did make a hand make a stitching pony, but I think we're going to make a new one. We're going to do that here together on the channel. A 
essentially what you do is you clamp this big boy down and then you open this up and you put your material in between there you tighten it up and then you can just stitch back and forth you can adjust this to however, whatever height you gotta have it well actually since we're about halfway there we might as well play with it right um, so let me grab Basically, you get a clamp, and you clamp this bad boy in, yeah, I'll be able to do it with this one. That's why it's always good to learn how to do things like um, one of these stitching ponies, it costs you $30 in the store. Uh, it cost me like probably $5 in nuts and bolts to make this because I had the scrap wood for it and I had the scrap leather for it. Okay, so we did that. Um, so we're going to open this up a little bit so that we can get this piece in there. Man, this thing doesn't open very far. Alright, did it. So we put it in there like so. Tighten her up nice so that it doesn't move around. So then I give you like I'm just I'm gonna make sure the camera's in a good spot still because we did elevate. We in a good spot still? Oh yeah, we're good. So can I turn this maybe? Get a little bit better. Oh there. Alright. So maybe the stitching pony wasn't a bad idea, everybody. Alright, so now this is essentially freeze up one of your hands, really. So you can kind of start working on your product. So we're just going to pull through. So. Always making sure we pull it tight. Um, not so tight that you break it like I usually do. But you, get, you guys get it. The craftsmanship is, the quality of your craftsmanship is going to be based on how well you do the things without breaking things. Yeah. Alright, so we got a little bit of a, there we go. All right, so we're pulling her tight. It's important we don't miss any stitches. It's important that we get it tight as we're pulling each stitch. Doing all the things. I don't know if it's going to let me run the stitch back. Yeah, actually it will because I got to tie it off at the end. That's right. Okay, so when we get up to the top, we're going to do a double stitch at the top like we did at the beginning. And then we're going to run the stitch back. And then we're going to tie off in the on the end there. Alright, we're getting close enough that we can take this off now. So that is a stitching, that's stitching with a stitching pony. Um, a makeshift stitching pony at that. Generally your stitching ponies are a little bit thinner than that. Um, that was just how I made it when I made it. 
Whew. We got stuff going everywhere now. All right. So let's get back to our stitches here. When you get into it, you'll get this thread hitting all kinds of things and you'll be having things flying all over your desk. There ain't gonna have a care in the world because you're stitching, you're relaxed, taking nice deep breaths, chilling. That's what I love about this, like any of these kind of crafts. The Legos do this to me too. Lego, that Lego build I just did, whew, that was nostalgia in itself because I ain't put one together in 35 years. And it took me a good long time to do that car. Actually, this car right here. Let's talk. Let's let them hang out there, the little mechanic guy. Yeah, we just did that one. And that was extremely relaxing, and it was really fun. And I'm glad that I have two more of them that I can do before I go buy more. We're going to do all kinds of things like this. Just relax. Embrace the fact that life can be good. Life can be relaxing, it can be peaceful, it can be joyful. You just got to find joy in what you're doing. That's all there is to it. Okay, so now we're at the point where we're going to do the double, right? So we're going to come up this way. Not that way exactly. We did that again, didn't we? We did that exact same thing again. No, it's different. All right, so here's our first one of the doubles, right? So here's our second one of the doubles. And this is just, seriously, I did it again. Why? Why is it choosing violence? Get back here! All right. Oh, I swear if I break this cord, I'm gonna be so upset. All right. <laughs> Okay, so this is our second run through, right? So now we're gonna come through again. And now we have to do the stitch, the opposite running, or the opposite of the running stitch we did the first time. So on the back side, you have your gaps. Um, you have all of these gaps. We're gonna close all of these gaps. So we're gonna go basically the opposite way we came through the first time. And this is gonna just firm up everything it's going to make a nice even stitch all the way across we're not going to have any any weakness no weak spots nice good strong stitch um, i don't know how good this project thread is that comes with the kits so you know i, I would imagine there's got to be some level of of decency to it um the threads that i use if i'm going to do my if i'm going to do like a like a handmade project where i don't have this stuff that stuff is from Main Thread. I buy it special from a company. Um, there's other ones called Tiger Thread and some other ones um, you can get. Free to choose however you want to do it. Um, if you find something that works amazing, leave it in the comments on the video here so we can check it out. Alright, and that's the last one. So now the only thing that we have left to do is tie this off. So we're just going to do a regular, um, we're just going to knot it like once, just a simple knot, and then twice like that. We are going to cut. We're going to leave a little bit of fringe on here because remember we are also going to light this up with the lighter on the ends here. 
just to bring those ends together. And then we're going to smash that down with our fingertips. The wax thread's going to solidify and that's going to make a nice hard piece. And there we have it. We have our knife sheath. I hope you all enjoyed this leather working adventure. On our next adventure we're going to look into some belt blanks and see if we can make some fancy nice looking belts for, I don't know, for whatever. If you enjoy these tutorials and leather working videos and this adventure um, as I'm learning how to do leather working, please consider liking, subscribing uh, the channel. And if you want to see some other tutorials, please feel free to leave a message in the comments or just let me know how your day is. Until next time, be inspired, be inspiring, and growl louder. Peace.